Minecraft mod packs are a great way to get infinite playability out of Minecraft. But how do you make a high quality mod pack for you and your buddies? Well, that's what I'm gonna be breaking down for you today. So I hope you enjoyed the video and timestamps are down below if you wanna skip around. So first things first, you need a platform to make your mod pack on. I personally prefer Curse Forge, as it's what I've made all my packs on thus far, but this tutorial should work on any mod loader. The link to download Curse Forge is in the description, and once you've downloaded it, just launch it like any other application. So once you launch Curse Forge, it's going to look something a little bit like this, and from here you're going to just go ahead and hit Minecraft, and in here you're going to find your mod packs. Now these are either the mod packs that you create, or the mod packs that you download. In this case, we're creating a mod pack. So we're gonna go ahead and click up here where it says create and you're going to be able to create your mod pack. Inside of this menu, you're gonna get to pick your Minecraft version and game type. But before you go ahead and select something, I want you to do a bit of background research into what mods you plan on using in your mod pack because some mods are exclusive to only Forge or Fabric or can only be played on specific Minecraft versions. So go watch a couple videos, see what mods you like and you wanna include in your pack before you go ahead and choose these things because once you choose your version and game type, you will not be able to change it. My personal recommendation would be to make just like a Google Doc of like the mods that you wanna include and then take note of what versions are available on before you choose your game type and version. Now, if you really don't care and you just want to make a pack from scratch i'm just going to really quickly explain the differences between forge and fabric and the minecraft versions forge is for your heavyweight super large scale mod packs i think forge has a lot more variety than fabric when it comes to overall mods so there's a lot more tech mods exploration mods bio mods it there's just a lot more stuff and fabric on the other hand has a lot less mod variety but it performs a lot better in terms of your overall like frames and your graphics and it just overall can give you a smoother playing experience so it just depends on what you'd like at the end of the day, it's your mod pack. Do whatever you want. Also, just to mention Vanilla, Neoforge, and Quilt. Uh, vanilla is basically Vanilla Minecraft, no mods. And Quilt and Neoforge are kind of new. I don't really know too much about them. But if you want to experiment with them, you definitely can. But just be aware, there's not a lot of mod variety yet. Okay, now let's go over what you all came here for. How to actually install mods. Well, there's two ways you can do it. The first way is just hitting the add content button on your mod pack and hitting install on whatever mod you like. You're welcome to search for stuff. You're welcome to just go through this list. Whatever you wanna do, any mods that you want, they're gonna be here. The second method of installing mods is going through the folder section. So you hit these three dots and hit open folder. From here, you can access your mods folder. Now what you can go ahead and do is install mods from a separate site like Modris and go ahead and download the mod from there and then drag and drop it into your mods folder. That's a lot more work. You're welcome to do that if you want to though, especially if the mod that you're looking for isn't available in this curse forge searching menu for mods. But yeah, those are the two ways to install. Once you install, you're pretty much good to hit play. Now you can go ahead and install mods at random, but I'm just going to really quickly give you a breakdown of the way I like to install mods because I like doing it in specific order to make sure I don't miss anything crucial to making sure that the mod pack runs well and is entertaining of course. So I start off by installing content mods first. I like to always start with the content mods because they're going to set the theme for your mod pack. Now you don't necessarily need the theme but you still want to make sure that you prioritize the mods that are going to be game changing. So for example mods that add new biomes, mobs, items, dimensions, or new methods of progression. I would install those types of mods first as they're going to be the core of what makes your mod pack unique. Once you have those installed installed like I do here, you can move on to installing your performance enhancers. So for your performance mods, I would go ahead and install mods like Sodium, Optifine, and Nvidium. Just because Minecraft mods are really hard to run sometimes, especially for lower end computers. So I recommend that you install some mods that are going to help beef up the uh, FPS and the overall terrain generation and the overall smoothness of the game. I'm going to leave a link in the description of the Google Docs that has all the performance mods I like to use. So you can go ahead and see which ones apply to your mod pack and feel free to leave performance enhancing recommendations down below. But go ahead and install your performance mods like I am right now. And once you've installed those, you can go ahead and add your utility and cosmetic mods. These would be mods like minimaps, tooltips, anything that improves the overall vanilla aspect of the game, as well as any mods that change the atmosphere, like adding new music or sounds. A few mods I'd like to mention in this category are Iron's Chest, Journey Map, Nature Mods, and any mods like dynamic surroundings or medieval music to give your game a more immersive feel. In terms of like shaders, you can also add this in this section. Depending on your version, you can add Iris for fabric, Oculus for forge and from there you can go ahead and go to the shader section and install whatever shaders you see available you can also look at resource packs they work as the same way as installing mods you just hit the button and they're there now the final type of mods i recommend you install are specifically if you plan on making your mod pack usable for multiplayer 
you plan on running a server with a mod pack, I recommend you install all the mods from the FTB series because they allow for things like server ranks, teams, claim chunks, so players can mark territories, and essentials like TPA and random teleport. And one last mod I want to recommend under this section is Essentials. If you don't plan on buying a server, Essentials allows you to host a Minecraft server as if it were a game like it, like on Bedrock Edition, so you don't need to buy anything. You can just play with your friends and launch the pack. I'll leave my full list of mods I recommend for servers in the description as well. But now that you have all your mods you want in your pack, let's go ahead and launch it and let's get through troubleshooting. So now it's time to talk about the hardest part of making a Minecraft mod pack, and it's troubleshooting the pack. So if you're one of the lucky few where if you hit play and the pack launches with no issues, well, congratulations, you did it. Made a mod pack, it's working. But if you're not a part of that few, let's go ahead and go through troubleshooting. So I'm going to walk you through it exactly how I would do it in any mod pack scenario. I'm going to try and keep it with as minimal cuts as possible so you guys can see exactly how I do things. All right, so we're just going to hit play. You hit your play button, play, pack's going to launch. Once it finally loads, you'll be able to see what issues you have with your mod pack. So in my case, it said error loading mods. The mod is creeper overhaul and it requires resourceful config. And it's going to tell me that it's not installed. This is the best case scenario. If this is why your pack isn't working, this is the best case scenario because all you have to do is install the resourceful config. So we'll just go ahead and do that real quick. All right, we're going to install resourceful config and now the pack will work. If this is not the case for you and it just completely crashes or it says a bunch of random things that you don't understand, I'm going to give you the rundown of how to deal with that. If it just straight up crashes, all I recommend that you do is go to profile options and hit custom RAM allocation. And from here, I would drag it to maybe the 6000s. Uh, that's kind of like the area I like to play with. Obviously, it depends on the amount of RAM you have in your computer, but I think 6,000-ish to 7,000-ish is probably a safe space to go from, from here. So I'm going to hit done, then you can try launching it again. If after that it doesn't work, now we can go ahead and take a look at the actual logs. So to do that, we're going to go to open folder, and you're going to go to logs, and you're going to hit the latest log. The latest log will show you exactly what latest happened in your mod pack. So in this case, uh, obviously you can see the error here from the last log that I just opened. But in your case, it'll show all of this crazy nonsense and it's going to look extremely scary. But don't worry, I have a fix for it. All you're going to do is go to where your logs folder was, take your latest log and search up mclo.gs. This is a site that's going to analyze your Minecraft logs and help you figure out what exactly the issue is. So I'm going to take whatever my log was. So I'm going to take this one. You should probably grab your latest and you're going to just put it in here and hit save. What's going to happen is it's going to fully analyze what is going on inside your Minecraft and why things aren't working. So in the top right corner, you can see 60 errors. You're going to want to hit that button. It'll show you exactly what the errors with your pack are. So in my case, the error was resourceful config was missing. I can see it right there. And all these other errors are just a consequence of this mod not being in here. Now, in your case, it might say something else. It might say like mismatch mod list, which basically means these two mods that you're seeing don't actually work together. In this case, I would just go ahead and switch out mods until you get to a version of the pack where it loads correctly. And if you're still having trouble with the pack, there's two other methods I can recommend for you to get help. One of them would be to just throw your Minecraft log file into ChatGPT and it'll spit out a solution some way or somehow. Uh, I think it, it, it works pretty accurately, although I don't fully recommend the use of AI. If you're really out of ideas and this isn't helping you, then I would definitely give it a shot. And after that, if that still isn't helping you, then feel free to come join my Discord server. Come talk to me personally. I can definitely try and help you out or talk to anybody else in the server that might have a clue on what's going on with your pack. All right, now that you got your pack working, troubleshooting is done. Let's talk about mod pack configuration. Now, what are configs exactly? Well, they are the settings of each individual mod that you are able to change. How do you do that exactly? Well, you go to the top three dots, you hit open folder, and you go to configs. In here, you can find all the configs for every single mod that's in your mod pack. Why would you want to change your configs? Well, say for example, you like a specific mod, but you don't like the type of mobs that are spawning in it. You can just disable it with the configs. There's two types of configs that you need to keep in mind, your client and your common or general configs. Your client configs are things that are going to change on your side that only affect you. So for example, carry on client. If I hit that, you you'll see configs that mainly relate to stuff related to the player like this arms should render on sides when carrying set to false if you experience issues yeah yeah whatever basically do you want arms to show up when you're holding out a chest or an item or a mob if you don't want that you would set the value to false 
if you do want that you would set the value to true that's it that that's that's all there is to it it's it's literally very simple after you decided what you want to do you just go ahead and hit the file button and hit save if you want to change something a little more complex though let's go ahead and change something like the born in chaos configuration a lot of configs try and make it easy for players to understand and honestly this looks pretty easy to understand so right here for example it says whether you get a warning effect from the missionaries or nightmare stalkers do you want this enabled or not if you want it enabled keep it true if you don't want it enabled then you can go ahead and change the value to false in this case i want it to stay true so i'm just going to change it to true uh false is to turn something off true is to turn something off in terms of weapons and like spawn rate values uh everything is going to be on a range scale now some some ranges are going to be from like zero to just like a crazy number and some ranges are going to be less than or greater than the value of one to zero just go ahead in the section under that with the equal sign change the value to anything inside of that range and it'll work perfectly so for example, Phantom Bomb count is set to 2 currently, and it says I can put it at a range of anything greater than 1. I don't think 2 Phantom Bombs are enough, I'm going to set it to 4. Now there will be 4 Phantom Bombs that get spawned when they are thrown. That's, that's it. That's all there is to configs. It's really simple, but if you have any questions about it, feel free to leave it in the comments or join the Discord like I said earlier. Anyways, let's move on to some finishing touches for your mod pack. So when it comes to adding finishing touches to your pack and things are working as intended, you can go ahead and start playtesting. Make sure everything loads in properly, make sure the game runs smoothly. What I like to do when I playtest is play for about 10 to 20 minutes, get the feel for the pack, and adjust video settings, controls, and shaders to make the game feel how you want it to feel. Because when you export the mod pack to CurseForge, all these settings will transfer over, and you want to give the player a new experience. With your mod pack that isn't just mods, you want to change the visual and mechanical settings as well. Some optional touches you can make to the pack is that you can add quest lines for it. Using the FTP quest, mod you can give your mod pack an actual end goal and some substance for players what i did with the mod pack i'm making in this video is just set up the request for the player to complete while they're playing but yours can be way more fleshed out if your mod pack is really complex and if you want a full guide on how to make quest lines it'll be linked in the top icon and in the description below the last adjustment you can make to your pack is go ahead and give it a logo now you don't necessarily need one but if you want to advertise the pack to an audience i'd recommend that you make one the best logo making application that i recommend is blockbench what it does it is allows you to create cool looking minecraft text that fit any theme i'll link a tutorial in the description not made by me but what i think would be useful for you in terms of making the logo now before we get into exporting the curse forge i just want to give you a couple more bonus tips that you might find helpful first curse forge tells you if a mod is incompatible with your mod pack so if there's this little caution image next to the version it's curse forge's way of saying don't use this version try a different one this is a great way to figure out what mods are causing you problems if you're having crashes and whatnot. The next tip is when you're creating a mod pack, keep in mind balancing. Make sure you can't become too overpowered where it's not fun anymore or not too difficult where you're going to want to rage quit unless that's what you're going for. My third tip is to just be patient. Minecraft mods can be rather complex at times and a lot of creating mod pack is trial and error. So keep trying things until they work. It's just a lot of testing, but once it's done, it'll all pay off. Now, finally, let's go ahead and export our pack to CurseForge. Okay, so your pack is fully complete and you're ready to export to CurseForge and you want to share it with your friends or your community. Here's how you do it. You hit the top three dots up here next to play and you hit share profile. And here you're going to export as a .zip file, give it a name and a package version. The package version is basically what version of the update that your pack is on. So if you're barely exporting it for the first time, it's gonna be V1. If you make any changes, you would then call it V2. That's just the way I like to do it. Once you're done with this, you can set your RAM allocation and you can select the files and folders you wanna include in the mod pack. So in this case, you wanna include your configs, you wanna include your data packs. I would also include your default configs if you have quests that you made for your pack. You would also include your mods, your resource packs, and your shader packs. And then from there, you're going to hit the export button. And it's going to save to your computer. Now your pack is ready to be put onto CurseForge. Also, really quickly, if you want to upload your pack to a server, you would just click the select server mods only button and upload that version instead of the non-version because it'll get rid of all the client side mods for you. Okay, so now that your pack is downloaded, you can go ahead and open up the CurseForge website, make an account, log in like I have here, and you're going to go ahead and go to my profile and you're going to go to manage projects. And here you can go ahead and hit start a project. You're gonna click on Minecraft and you're going to give it a project name. 
you're going to upload an image for it in this case if you have a logo this is where your logo would go so there you go there's my logo right there you're going to give it a slight summary you're going to select your class which is basically what type of project is it in this case you're uploading a mod pack so you're going to hit mod packs you're going to hit the main category so what is it mainly based on is it adventure rpg exploration horror magic in this case my pack is horror and then you would add any additional categories once you're done with that you're going to hit next and you're going to give it a full description i'm gonna hit next license just keep this keep this how it is you're gonna do all rights reserved and don't allow third-party distribution it's up to you if you want other sites other than curse words to distribute your project i personally don't like to but if you want to you definitely can and then once this is done you can go ahead and add your first file in this case it's the export that you just did so you're going to go ahead and choose your file right here i have journey p halloween edition 2025 version.1 go ahead and start uploading that we'll have that go ahead and go you're going to click on your mod loader in this case mine is forge you're going to click your minecraft version mine is 1.20.1 and you're going to hit if it's a beta alpha or a release I personally like to put things in beta and then once i'm fully done working on it and i feel that it's working with no issues i'll go ahead and put it release and you can add a change log if you like and you're just going to hit add file once it's done it'll start uploading to curse forge and you're just going to wait for it to get approved once it's approved you'll get feedback on whether or not the project needs some fixes or it's just approved and it's up on the curse forge page approval takes as little as a couple hours to a couple days just be patient curse forge will get back to you and once it's approved congratulations you just made your first mod pack and that's all i have for you today's video i hope you found it helpful please leave a like and subscribe i'd very much appreciate it and feel free to leave any comments or questions or concerns down below if you want to play the mod pack i made in this video it's available for download in the description a full video of me playing will release soon thank you for watching